Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy sitting here in quarantine with everybody else. Today we're going to go ahead and have a look at why the sun sets on the flat earth according to the flat earth model. Today we're going to talk about the dome, so it should be fun. So cue up the music and let's go. Or even better, some of you talk about a dome with the sun on the other side that produces some bizarre optical effect. Okay, so now we're talking about grade school things. We're talking about listening. There are two domes. One is your personal field of vision. You can't see forever. You can only see so far through any, through air or through a liquid. In any case, you can only see so far. You know, here's the problem that you run into with this, and this is why your argument is so easy to dismiss. You claim that the sun and the stars and things like that are actually in the dome. That's what the Bible says, and that's what you're based on. So if we can see those objects that are in the dome, the dome itself is within our personal dome. They're the same thing. To claim that somehow they're different without being able to demonstrate the existence of either of them is just downright silly and not worthy of further consideration. So if you have some evidence that either of these domes exists or can demonstrate why they would be required, present it. If not, explain the sunset on your flat earth model, which you don't have. And so it's actually a sphere of vision. It has nothing to do with the geometry of the earth. I hate to point out the obvious, but don't you remember like one or two episodes ago, you were talking about planetariums and you completely ignored the fact that the planetarium roof was the inside of a sphere and made a big point out of showing that the floor to the planetarium was flat. Therefore, the earth must be flat. But now you don't want to use that exact same argument with this. I find that interesting. The other dome is the one you showed, which is much larger than your field of vision. Okay. And you're wrong about something else. I'm sorry to say, but the sun is within the dome that you just showed. That dome that covers the earth like a tent. Okay. So once again, you're quoting the Bible because this is the standard creationist line. And that goes along with my theory that flat earth is nothing but warmed over creationism arguments. Now, here's a little problem for you, Sonny. I have a heater in my bathroom, which is an enclosed room. If I leave that heater on, because it's in the room surrounded by the walls, the dome of my bathroom, if you want to call it, that bathroom hits 95 degrees. Now, if we had a furnace like the sun in our atmosphere, would that not warm up the atmosphere? Would it not get hotter the closer you got to the sun, i.e., as you went up that 3,000 miles to the sun? Yes, it would. And while you're at it, if the earth is a flat plate and the fires of hell are underneath the earth, in the foundations of the earth, wouldn't that heat the earth up like a frying pan? Where's all this heat going, Chief? Can you explain that? It may not be shaped like you have shown. That's an animation. We're talking about a graven image, if you want to speak about it in terms of mosaic law of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not make unto thyself any graven image. You know what another commandment is? Thou shalt not bear false witness which is what you're doing right now. That's talking about idols like golden animals that are worshipped, but the globe is worshipped, not by me. Uh, so, okay, the sun would be inside that dome that you showed, okay? But your personal field of vision, that dome would be beneath the point source of light we call the sun. Okay? Is that clear? I, I'm trying to educate you. Educate us? Seriously? You can't even put together a coherent thought. You're talking about the personal dome and you're showing 
photographs and slideshows and videos of emergency rooms. What does the one have to do with the other? Can you not focus your argument somewhat and answer the question that was put to you? Please explain sunset on a flat earth model. Not on a globe earth model, on a flat earth model using real observations that are verifiable and repeatable. Have at it. I don't know if you'll listen though, because that is, that seems to be a problem. I'm gonna to have to mark you with a not satisfactory, unsatisfactory. Apart from the sheer absurdity of this magical dome that no one has ever seen or touched. Well, okay, the Voyager is something I've never seen or touched uh, at 13.8 billion miles away. Um, okay, so what, <laughs> is, that, is that a thing now that uh, it's magical and ridiculous if you can't see it or touch it? I mean, the Trappist system? I mean, okay, let's talk about that. Do you even listen to yourself, Chief? Let's go ahead and do a couple of quick things here. First of all, you say the Scott Station doesn't exist because you've never been there because you haven't seen or touched it. Now you're claiming that if something isn't seen or touched, it must be magical, even though the Voyager somehow exists. Well, here's the difference. This little video that you're putting together is a tour of the Scott Station, it looks like. It's down at the South Pole. I didn't realize that at first because I didn't see outside, but when you came to the windows, you're down at the South Pole. So you're arguing against something you're putting up a video about. Second of all, I haven't seen the Voyager probe. I was just a kid when it went out. However, there are people that did see the Voyager probe. There are people that put it in the rocket. There are people that fueled the rocket. There are people that launched the rocket. And for the last 30 something years, there are people that have been tracking that probe. That probe is very real. There's evidence that it's real. Now, as far as your dome that you want us to believe in, which you've never seen, touched, or gone to, that you're taking on faith because you were told that there was a dome, this is a very different thing. There's no supporting evidence that there actually is a dome, unlike the Voyager. So again, this is an evocation fallacy where you're talking about two things as if they are somehow on equal setting because they are both two things that you haven't seen personally. You know, this is why the flat earth is held in ridicule, because you can't think, you can't reason, you can't use logic, and you don't respect evidence. You're actually just pretty amazing in the level of willful ignorance that you put on YouTube. And I think that's one of the things that drew me to pointing out your obvious flaws. So please continue. I'm finding this rather amusing, and I think my audience is too. Let's talk about the Mars rover. Wait, no, I can see it and touch it. I haven't been to Devon Island, Canada, but I've seen photographs of it. I've seen that on Google Earth. I haven't seen the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station, but I've seen uh, <laughs> I've seen the Mars rope. You haven't seen the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station yet. You just finished playing videos of it. You haven't seen the Mars rover, but there are people that have. There are people that are at the Amundsen Scott Station right now, including the person that took that video. Yet you want us to believe in something that simply doesn't exist and has no evidence for its existence, such as a dome. Then you make up a term called your personal atmospheric dome that is even sillier. I don't know. You're, you're a great source of amusement to me sometimes and a source of some sadness, too. You know, I think what this series is demonstrating best is the need in the flat earth for the flat earth to be real. They have to believe this narrative because the narrative must be real. And any evidence to the contrary of that narrative can be hand waved off. Uh, any evidence that even remotely somehow in their minds supports it is taken as gospel. They apply different standards to different proof. For example, they'll dismiss the, the Edmondson Scott Station at the South Pole because they've never been there but then turn around and say, well, the dome is real, even though I've never been there. And then we show video from the Scott station and they just ignore it. They put it in their own videos, not realizing what it was. 
And it's just an exercise in observation of abnormal psychology, in my opinion. This is an abnormal thinking process. And it's kind of sad in a way to watch it happen and what happened to critical thinking and general education, you know, not only in the United States, but in the world in general. Because any decent education system should teach enough critical thinking skills that this would no longer be a thing. Yet it is a thing. Why is that? So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Hit that little like and subscribe button down there, and we'll see you for the next episode. Thanks again for stopping by, and stay safe, folks.